Hi, and welcome to this week's GMBN Tech Show, coming at you from the completely unfinished uh, GMBN Tech Set. Last week, I had all the stuff off the wall, uh, filling in the holes, giving it a fresh lick of paint. Uh, to be honest, we've just not had time to finish it off yet, and we've got a few special things arriving. So bear with me, but it's going to look wicked in here. I'm well excited about it. Anyway, coming up on the show this week, we talk a little bit about adapted bikes. We have a look at that Ibis XC, which is their XC uh, Cross Country Edition bike, the 40 Years Special Edition one. Uh, very cool piece of kit. Got a really, really cool uh, top mod from my friend Finn using a bit of a Chris King headset, turning it into a coffee tamp. Super, super cool hack. Uh, and got some really cool comments from you lot. Now jumping into this week's show, I want to talk to you a little bit about some adaptive bikes, things that help people that aren't as fortunate as fully able people uh, to ride and shred on mountain bikes. In particular, Martin Ashton. So I went riding with Martin last week, uh, Basically, the excuse was to go and make a video all about his bike, which you will see on GMBN Tech soon, but let's face it, who am I kidding? It was so I could go riding with Martin and so he could have a day, a day riding out bike park rails with me. Now, I'm sure a few of you would have seen us there. We saw loads of cool viewers out on the trails, and I was just absolutely blown away by this piece of kit that he's using. This is probably one of the coolest bits of mountain bike tech ever. It's called the Bowhead. Here are some shots of it on screen. It's just mind-blowing. So we're going to have a little look at the configuration and the layout of it in that video. I don't want to spoil too much. But what I want to draw on is just how cool it is and what it really enables Martin to do. And then I'll ask a few of you if you've seen anything cool out there. I also want to show you another thing. Now, firstly, in case you're unaware, Martin unfortunately no longer has the use of his legs, which is why he's been searching for the ultimate way for him to still ride a mountain bike, because he's just not going to quit. That's what he does. So the first thing he did was get a sit ski style seat. It's like a bucket seat and he mounted it to his Canyon Sender. Uh, he rode down Fort William on that, which that's the feat for anyone to do because it's a seriously rough trail to ride anyway. Uh, he took the thing to Whistler, went with him. I nearly had a heart attack following him because he was jumping step ups and jumping tables on A-line and here and there getting bucked. And it was just like, oh my God. Uh, but he, he won't stop. He wants to do more and more and more. Then came the tandem idea, the random tandem, and I think that was kind of my idea from just a bit of a thing we went for a few beers and uh, we were just discussing how much fun it would be to have like a motor on the back basically and Martin sails the thing and everyone just has to work together. Uh, so that's happening. But now he's on the bowhead, which we actually saw on that trip to Whistler, I think in 2017. Now bowhead actually has opened up a whole new realm for Martin and I just really wanted to say a massive props to bowhead for even doing what they're doing. Um, just to illustrate things here, so this is a three-wheel mountain bike. I'm going to call it a mountain bike even though it's got three wheels because you ride it like one, you treat it like one, and you enjoy mountain biking in the same way that we all do. Now, the whole point of it originally was to enable someone to have the freedom to get out into, uh, basically to adventure, to go bike packing. It has got mounts on there for bags and stuff. But the really, really important thing about this bike is Martin can get on this and he can ride this on his own uh, from his doorstep with no help from other people. He can just get out and ride. Now, don't get me wrong, mountain biking is a social sport and you want to do it with your friends. But at times, it's got to be pretty tricky when you have to rely on your friends constantly to help you when you're out on the trail. I know it does for Martin. And actually, he's wanted to like just do stuff himself. And Martin was ripping on this thing. Honestly, I'm not even joking. There's some clips running by as I'm talking, following him down some of the trails of Bike Park Wales, drifting it in the turns and stuff, getting air. Unbelievable. It's like Martin's back. It's the coolest thing I've seen for a long time. And in fact, the last time I felt sort of like emotional and really sort of just so enthusiastic about biking was when I went riding with Tom Wheeler. Um, so if you haven't seen the Tom Wheeler video, the link is in the description underneath. There's a bike check as well that's also down there. Please watch it. If you've not seen it, you absolutely must watch it. And please leave us some feedback in this video in the comments underneath about that. In fact, I, I owe Tom um, a huge thank you still for that video. And actually, I want to go back and see him again because he's got apparently an even better bike now. Uh, but the point is, Tom essentially has a paralyzed arm uh, and has to ride using all of his controls and stuff on one side of the bars. Uh, so it's quite an incredible setup that he has on that bike. Uh, but it's really cool. Another person, it was just like, when you know, had an injury, basically a really bad injury, and wasn't like, I wonder if I'm gonna ride mountain bikes again. It's like, well, how am I gonna do it? And that's the, how it was approached. And I'm just in awe of anyone that tackles things like this and gets on with it. So I'd love to hear from you. If you know of anyone that's done something similar, even on a basic level, doesn't matter, really doesn't matter. If someone's had some kind of injury and they're still out riding mountain bikes in one form or another, 
Let's hear it. Let's get some great stuff in the comments underneath. And if it's a really cool bike or something worth seeing, then perhaps we'll come and see you. Because uh, I just think this stuff is great and more people need to know about it because mountain biking is an inclusive thing. It's for everyone. It is not an exclusive, you know, I've got the cool bike, you know, don't come riding with me. Mountain biking is for everyone and anyone. And I really want to encourage more people to do it. So um, just big ups to Bowhead massively. Um, shout out to Martin and a shout out to Tom Wheeler. Uh, be real nice to see you again soon, Tom. Okay, so now into news. And the first thing is the Ibis XC. So we did report on this a while back. Uh, as you might imagine by the name, XC. It means XC, cross-country, XC riding. Uh, it's their brand new bike. It's a short travel, super lightweight, cross-country style bike, but with modernized geometry. Uh, there is going to be a link to this bike in the description underneath if you want to read all of the geometry charts. Um, I've already been through that before on a show a couple of weeks back, uh, but what I wanted to draw you to here is the fact that this one is their 40th anniversary model. Now this bike is actually made, uh, the XE, all of them, are made in their Santa Cruz factory. I mean, does that make them more Santa Cruz than Santa Cruz? Uh, not really sure where I'm going with that, I just kind of thought of that, that they're actually making bikes in America again in their factory in Santa Cruz, which I, I absolutely love, it's amazing. I did get a tour of that facility and Scott Nickel was telling me everything about how they intended to do that in the future, so I'm so delighted that they're actually doing this now. Now the first 40 bikes to leave the factory, now you might be lucky enough to see one of these in a dealer somewhere, um, I guess they would have shipped them around a bit. The first 40 are special limited edition ones. Uh, now here's a few shots on screen, I've just been going through the spec on these and it's, it's bonkers the stuff on it. So the spec has been handpicked by Hans, who's one of the other chaps at Ibis, and he's spent over four and a half thousand miles testing what he thought was the best kit to go on that bike. So he's handpicked everything. Now, just some of the cool things on there. So they've got Fox 34 step cast on the front with 120 mil travel, float DPS shock on the rear. Ibis, they've got their own XC wheels. They're the S, uh, yeah, the S28, so 28 mil rims on those. Industry 9 Hydra hubs. <whistles> they are seriously nice hubs. Maxxis Recon Race on the front, 2.4 and a completely different mismatched tyre on the rear. I've got the Conti Race King, uh, which is a super, super fast, lightweight tyre. So I've definitely gone for the sort of the traction and stability up front, and the doesn't matter what's going on out the back as long as it's fast. And that tyre, as far as I know, is one of the fastest rolling tyres on the market. So I think this is really cool. You can see it's hand-picked by the fact it's got two different brands on there. Uh, so, so it has got XTR transmission on there, not much to say about that. Two piston brakes um, with the carbon levers on the bars. Cane Creek, E-wings, titanium cranks, and a Hellbender bottom bracket. Uh, now I don't know on the spec on the bottom bracket if it's the one that's got the uh, sausage factory bearings in there, the Neo bearings, I kind of hope it is, or sorry, the um, SKF Matrix bearings. Uh, kind of hope it is because I think that's a real cool addition to those. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about with those Hellbender bottom brackets and the Sausage Factory bearings, there's a link to when I discovered these things, well, I didn't discover, when I first saw them at Eurobike a few years back uh, in the description underneath. Have a watch of that. I think it's awesome. Uh, if you wreck bearings, you might be interested in those. Also, there's going to be a link to the Cane Creek website we can read about their use of them in that description. Give it a read. Really cool stuff. Um, Envy bars on there. Bike yoke dropper post. Extra light hyper stem. Those things weigh like 60 grams. 60 grams for a stem. It's ridiculous. And they say that Scott Nichols' personal bike, now Scott, as far as I remember, he's similar height to me, so I'm assuming he's probably riding an extra large. They say his bike weighs 22.7 pounds. Big old bike. The reach is like, I think, I think it was like over 500 mil. So um, really cool stuff from Ibis. Now, the frame is available for $4,499 US dollars and that complete launch edition, special edition bike, uh, $11,799, uh, but there's only 40. Um, so if that is your cup of tea, you might want to get on a blower pretty quick to see if you can see one of those. Uh, I, I obviously love Ibis, I think it's a great bike. And at some point I'll have another one. I uh, always loved the Ibis bikes I had in the past. There's just something about them. They're one of those brands, Ibis, Yeti, there's just a few out there that just have that thing. In fact, here's a question for you. What other brands, excluding Ibis and Yeti, have that thing? You know, you don't know what it is, they've just got the thing that makes them really cool. Uh, there's a few more, I'm sure. Let us know in the comments. What brands have that thing? Okay, next up, uh, custom GT race bikes. 
Now I knew about this a while back and I actually saw some insider photos. Now the whole GT Good Times team is kind of bringing back the old image that the GT factory team used to have back in the day. Let's not forget the GT factory racing team was one of the biggest teams for such a long time. A really successful team as well and it's really cool to see them having a little nod to the past but with their new amazing bikes. Uh, super cool stuff. And in fact, the bike on screen you can see, uh, belong to Martin Mays, is actually his new enduro bike, that new Force, uh, which in itself is a bit weird because when it was uh, when we knew it was coming, it looked like it was going to be a sanction and it's uh, in the place of a sanction but called the Force. I never actually asked that one to GT, but I will ask them to find out. Uh, anyhow, you might notice it's got Twin Crown on the front because that's the one he raced at Maribor. Yeah, on a 160mm rear end. Um, the guy must be crazy. I mean, he's one of the best bike handlers on earth and a supreme athlete, but what made him think he could ride a 160 mil bike on a track like Maribor that make, makes 210 mil travel bikes look like hardtails? Like, that track is seriously rough. Um, but fair play, he had to go anyway, uh, and he actually acknowledged the fact that, yeah, maybe it wasn't the right choice. Uh, but Martin, you're an amazing rider, so um, real cool stuff. Look forward to seeing you in action at the next EWS on that with a, a single crown fork back on there. But it does say a lot about what that new bike from GT can do. Uh, but anyway, I only came here for the paint jobs. Look how cool that is. <laughs> Sick, isn't it? Uh, next up, what have we got? So, custom Trek bikes. Now, you might have seen these if you tuned into the race from Maribor at the weekend. I mean, um, the obvious one to talk about is Reese Wilson's. Um, looking at his on the screen now. I mean, look, it looks a bit like a C3PO, isn't it? A C3PO special. Um, insanely shiny. Man, Scotsman riding in all white kit on a gold shiny bike. There's a statement if you've ever seen one. Uh, but so cool. And what a cool dude he seems to be as well. Uh, now, I did hear the Aster run a load of black tape on that top tube because it was so shiny, he was getting glare coming off the bike. Isn't that bonkers? Um, and then Loris Vergés in the bright green. Almost a bit, bit like a Christmas tree, really, isn't it? But um, man, what, what a run. Unbelievable. So that bike is clearly working very well. Now, don't get me wrong, Loris, an incredible race, and the same with Reese. but um, it helps when you've got a bike that works really well, and that thing looks stuck to the floor. Looks really cool. Uh, also, if you look closely on Loris's bike, you might see what appears to be uh, a different set of rotors from SRAM. Mm, more on those soon. Okay, so let's pick up a few comments from last week's show. Now, I was talking about gravel bikes and just actually asking what people think of them. Um, mostly positive stuff, which is great because we love positivity here. So Mike S said, it's an all-purpose bike for people who want to do different things but can't afford the money or the space for a rack of bikes. Hatchback of the bike world. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Roger D, Gravel bikes are, the are to the 2020s what the fixie was to the 2010s. It's a modern day hipster bike. That they are. I've seen a whole bunch of hipsters riding. Seriously, you're gonna, you're gonna laugh when you see what I've built. It's gonna crack you up. Uh, don't get me wrong, I don't hate them. I didn't even hate the fixie. If you're out riding your bike and having fun, that's all that matters. Next fad, the e-fixie. <laughs> uh, you shouldn't joke about these sort of things because it's likely to happen. Have you seen that e-jump bike? I'm sorry, but that just seems completely pointless to me. Um, I mean, no offense to anyone if you've bought one or the designers of the bike, because it's a bike and it's cool, but the whole point of jump bikes is using flow to get through stuff. I, I just don't get it. Maybe there's something I'm missing. Don't know. Uh, Michael Moore. The gravel bike is the mountain biker's mile munching machine. Isn't that what the cross country bike is? Azaf Cohen, I consider gravel bikes a great way to get roadies off the tarmac and away from cars. Um, not being a roadie myself, my benefit is reduced likelihood to get run over on one of them. Uh, yeah, that's a great shout. Um, I've always said that I love road bikes and I love the classic road riding that you see in the Alps and you know the mountain stages, but there's not really much that makes me want to ride a road bike where I live. I've got to say, potholes on the roads, drivers that just treat every lane like a, like a rat run. Um, it's just not really, so, I don't want to be on the road. So yeah, actually, if you want to do some miles and stuff on a bike that's like a road bike, but enjoy the country a bit more, gravel bike, yeah, that's a great shout. I'll buy that completely. Uh, last gravel one from Danny I says, gravel's my commuter bike. I can fly on the road and cut through the woods on single trail. I've got a full size Stumpy 29er for fun. I've got Hardtail Marin, uh, custom built 650B as a backup bit of fun. that brings the skills uh, if you lose them on a full sus. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, quiz time now. Right, rattling through this. First quiz question coming at you on screen. 
What makes Chris King hubs so special? There's a few things here. Uh, happy to have just one, but uh, if you can fill them all in, happy days. Next question. We made a documentary with Tom Wheeler. I referenced it earlier in the show. There's gonna be links underneath for you to check it out. And it was all about his Mondraker that he'd adapted to be able to ride with one working arm or one working hand. He had two sets of brake levers on one side of the bars with a custom sub bar setup to make it all work. But since that video, one manufacturer is now making a brake lever with a single mount that has two separate levers to operate two separate brakes, i.e. a front and a rear brake from one side of the bars, right or left. Who makes it? And the last question, uh, gearbox related actually, because we have a gearbox video coming up with Starling Cycles. What are the two major players in the gearbox realm called? Okay, now it's time for top mods. If you've made anything cool, done anything to your bikes, made them a bit different from how you bought them or a bit different to your mates, share it. Share it with all of us. Uh, there's a link at the bottom of the screen right here and there's another one down there. Uh, get involved and come and join us on the show. So the first one this way is says Mini Me Balance Bike. So this intrigued me straight away because I can see a bike here uh, with a blue handlebar grip and then at the bottom there is a nearly identical colorway version in a balance bike. Hmm. I can feel already what I might need to do here with Dustin's bike. Poor lad, can't even ride it yet, and I might be changing it. So this is from Aaron in Calgary. Doddy, with our first child coming, um, I thought it'd be cool to customize a balance bike to match my wife and I's bikes. My wife rides a Trek Remedy in Miami Green, and I ride a Yeti SB150 in Anthracite. I started with, out of interest, why did you not pick the Yeti Blue? Um, just serious question. Uh, was it too common for you, or did you prefer the sort of the murdered outlook? It does it really nice, by the way. Just, just asking for a friend. Uh, I started with a Commercial Ramones 12, very cool little bike, by the way. Stripped it down, gave it custom paint. I then gave a couple of one-up features to match my cockpit. Hopefully our child loves riding as much as we do. Uh, love the show. Hey, I'm sure they will. If it's something you love, they might just gravitate that way, but let's, let's, not, uh, let's not mask it over at all. Like, bikes are fun for anyone. Uh, it's just gonna be a great part of your kid's childhood, so uh, real cool stuff. I mean, let's face it, look at a biker stock. It's cool as anything. Now, the last one I just want to do a shout out to is this uh, coffee tamp. How cool is this? So this was Finn at Full Factory Suspension. I actually took Martin's bike over there uh, to give it a once over after we were riding it on Thursday last week because it was making a right odd racket. I think Martin has just thrashed that thing and just basically put it on charge and thrashed it again. He's not really giving it much TLC. So we took it over there, gave it a bit of love. Now it's uh, back with Martin again and that's all good. Uh, so big ups to Finn for helping fix that one. But even more big ups for making this coffee tamp. I want one. Um, what do I need to do? Buy a big lump of brass to get you to uh, machine it down for me on your lathe and a Chris King Rasta headset. That's just the coolest thing. If anyone has got a cooler coffee tamp, let's see it. That's what I'm saying. Okay, now into Bike Cave. Now, I was gonna give you a little tour of what's going on here, but it's not finished. So um, I think it might be by next week, but we're waiting for a key component to turn up before I start mounting stuff on the wall. Uh, this will do for the time being. Uh, this will give you a little indication of where we're going, but it's gonna be a bit more homely. I already feel quite home in here now, so uh, much better than it was before anyway. Now, for another bike cave entry, here we've got a really cool one, and this one is my first bike cave from Kyle. I work on all the kids' bikes in my neighborhood for free in the bike cave. Hey Carl, that is the way to do it. That is super cool, being able to sort of share the love, help people save a bit of money, look after their bikes, hopefully teach them a bit about looking after their bikes. Hey, that's really cool. Nice little vise on the corner there. What's that little four inch vise on a swivel mount? Carl's bike cave. Oh, dude, it's awesome. It looks wicked. And super cool that you're like helping other people out as well. I love that. Do I detect you've got some sort of compressor or is that just a gas bottle down the back there? I think it might just be a gas bottle. Nice, good amount of stuff you got in there. There's some power tools in there. Don't know if they're yours or your folks, but uh, there's your specialized bike. Hey, looking great stuff. Hey, this is what it's all about. Building your own little place you can work on the bikes and hang out with your mates, all that sort of stuff. Like I said, if you've got a cool bike cave, send it in. The link is gonna be right down here. Uh, really cool stuff. Okay, so back onto the quiz then for some answers. Okay, so the first question was, what makes Chris King hubs so special? Right, so there was three major things here. So the first one, lifetime warranty. 
no quibbles. And if you know someone has got Chris King, they'll tell you probably just how good they are. In fact, they might have bored you with it because they are really a thing that every mountain biker has to sort of aspire to. Don't necessarily have to spend the money and own them, but they're something you really need to appreciate just how good they are. The other thing is the ring drive on them. So they make a really cool sort of buzzing noise. They're almost silent to start with. And as it starts uh, rotating, going a bit faster, it starts buzzing. It's a really distinct noise. Now it's almost like a bit of a worm drive system. The way that it works, it's always half engaged, so it can't slip. And it has the highest torque rating of what it can accept, uh, as far as I know, of almost any hub in mountain biking. Uh, astonishing system on there. And the last one is they've got the legendary in-house bearings on the inside. So the races of bearings they have on them, not only are they adjustable, but they wear in. They get better as they wear. Get your head around that. Chris King headsets, Chris King bearings, Chris King hubs for life. Um, say no more. Next up, we made that documentary with Tom Wheeler, as explained, and it has the adaptive setup for two brake levers on, on one set of the bars. What manufacturer now makes a brake lever uh, to, to suit a system like this? That's yeah, Hope. Hope technology. Brilliant stuff from Hope. Uh, big shout out to Hope for just being cool and making cool stuff. And next up, what are the two main gearbox manufacturers called? Pinion and Effie Gear. They were the two that I was looking for. I'm sure there are others available out there, but they're really the ones that are kind of making waves in the gearbox realm at the moment. Well, that is at least until Shram and Shimano uh, pull their fingers out, isn't it? Well, hopefully we'll see them at some point. And uh, on that bombshell, enough of this show. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the show. Let us know what you think in the comments underneath, and uh, we'll see you next week. Ta-ra!